Hello, I'm Karthik Balakrishna, pediatric otolaryngologist. Today we'll be talking about lingual frenulectomy. Here we see the frenulum elevator or frenulum retractor. It is forked. It goes on the ventral surface of the tongue with the lingual frenulum itself sitting in the slit between the two lobes of the retractor. If this is not available, a gauze or a forcep can be used to elevate the tongue and put the lingual frenulum under tension. Here we see a finger grasping the tongue and the elevator then being placed. The tongue is elevated and you're able to see there the frenulum under tension. The bovi is pointing to the submandibular duct papillae and the frenulum there. Once it is under tension, the monopolar cautery is used to transect the lingual frenulum. Care is taken to stay away from the submandibular duct papillae, which were identified before. A gentle push with the finger completes the division of the frenulum, and if any little bit is left posteriorly, this is further divided. This can also be done simply by crushing the frenulum with a clamp and transecting it with scissors, which is a common technique used when this is performed in awake infants in clinic. Here we see the residual defect on the ventral surface of the tongue, which is then closed in a vertical fashion using chromic gut suture with a taper needle, typically a 3-0 or 4-0 stitch. This can be done either as interrupted or as horizontal mattress sutures and is simply used to approximate the mucosal edges to speed healing. Again, take care to avoid the submandibular duct papillae while you are suturing. Not every piece of the mucosa needs to be closed in any sort of watertight or airtight fashion. And we can see now the tongue protrudes easily beyond the teeth. Key points of this procedure include elevation of the tongue, identification of the submandibular duct papillae, and taking care to transect the frenulum entirely 